What's good YouTube? Slender Revolution X here. Coming to you guys today with a discussion video. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is three budget options for a side deck that in a game right now, competitively, is getting really, really expensive. Cards like Evenly Matched, which you generally play at three in the side, are running you upwards of $150 to $160 for a playset, if not more. Cards like Infinite Impermanence, uh, which you could be spending up to $240 on a playset alone. Uh, that's not really realistic for a budget slash semi-competitive player. Uh, a lot of times those kind of players are going to want to focus on putting that money into their main deck to be more competitive in the first place. Or if you're just playing for fun, you want to have a chance against some of these budget or some of these meta decks. Uh, these are three cards that can really make a difference. The first card I want to talk about is Deck Lockdown. Now, Deck Lockdown we've seen have a lot of play in the past. Uh, it's been a side deck card for a long time that people have generally turned to in formats where searching is very crucial to a gameplay. Uh, the card states that neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them, and you can't special summon monster from the deck. Destroy this card in the second standby phase after its activation. So. What gives this card utility, uh, especially in the game right now, is every deck searches. You know, no matter you're playing Goki, no matter if you're playing Spiral, no matter if you're playing Trickstar, Sky Striker, God knows whatever else you want to throw into there. Uh, all of these cards search. You know, Sky Strikers have Engage, Trickstars have Light Stage, Gokis have every monster that they own, and Spirals has Spiral of Azor. Deck Lockdown, especially being a magic card, gives you the opportunity to make your plays and then activate it at the end. So you can build your board, set up however you would like, do all of your searching out of your deck preemptively, main phase two, or at the end of main phase one, whenever you choose to activate it, throw down the deck lockdown, and it's a floodgate to you know keep your opponent from going off on you. A lot of times you throw this down on like a, a Sky Striker or a Goki player, like their turns become seriously, seriously inhibited. Like you, you really make a difference onto their decks, uh, not allowing them to do those searches. A lot of things like, like mistake, like as a trap card, this is this is better than mistake in my opinion, uh, because it allows you to do those plays first, and it doesn't have to be set. Uh, it can't be read rebooted, which is a big side deck card nowadays. So, deck lockdown is actually a really good card to just think about siding. And in a play set, you're looking at probably six dollars tops for a play set of deck lockdown, uh, as compared to like. The place that of Drolls, which do relatively the same thing. The place that of Ashes, which do relatively the same thing. Like This card replaces, for the budget player, a lot of different things uh, that, you know, ex more expensive cards do less effectively. You know, it being a continuous spell, yeah, it can be MST, but if your opponent can't search cards to MST cards, it's, it's, it's very, very strong. Uh, I really like Deck Lockdown. Uh, I've been personally thinking about signing two myself. I think two is a good option. Um, and it's just another floodgate that your opponent may not see coming uh, that really can stunt their turns. It's really impressive. The second card I wanted to talk about was Summon Limit. Now, Summon Limit has seen some play back in the True Draco when True Draco was really big. But nowadays, we're looking at, with True Draco essentially out of the picture, uh, you're not going to see it at a competitive level too, too much. Uh, Summon Limit becomes very, very effective. You're looking at limiting your opponent to only two summons per turn. Um, while this is also a continuous trap, it allows you to preemptively make all of these plays uh, and do all of your summons on your own. Now, unlike Deck Lockdown, it's not going to disappear after two turns, but if you build a board, much like Royal Oppression did back in like 2010, uh, if you build your board and then flip this up on your opponent, the game is so monster effect centric, everything is so centered around monster effects nowadays, that summon limit can really put a peg into whatever your opponent's trying to do. Uh, things like Goki, once again, uh, really become stunted. Things like Spirals, you know, they're not even going to be able to get to the double helix if you flip this up on their standby phase. Unless they can deal with this card with a tough or something like that. I forget if it's tough or... It might be both. Between tough and uh, super agent. Like, unless your opponent can deal with this card, it puts you in a really good position to going into turn three of the game. To make a push to win the game, um, I think it's a very good budget option. I think they may be twenty cents. Uh, it's it's just a floodgate, which in the world today is imperative for a lot of decks to be able to form. I mean, look, True Draco made a living on flood deck floodgates, um, but any card that can really hinder your opponent in this way. Uh, so we've gone through two things. We've gone through the hindering of your opponent through not allowing them to search. We've gone through the hindering of your opponent. Flooding, allowing them to, not allowing them to conduct more than two summons in a turn. Both of these very effective ways of stopping all meta decks these days. Uh, now, this third card is something that I believe just 
top that was just in a, one of the top decks of a Nationals or something like that. And that is Serratus the Ancient and Ascended. And we're talking about a ritual hand trap that's going for around $4 right now. Now, the best part about this card is in a world where non-targeting destruction doesn't really exist anymore, or non-targeting effects in general, uh, it's everything targets nowadays. So you're making a lot of plays where things target. And he is when your opponent targets a monster you control, you can discard this card from the hand and negate the activation of that effect. Things like Widow Anchor uh, instantly come to mind when thinking of this card. Uh, I pick these up for that reason. I pick these up to run in any kind of Sekka's Light deck where you're going to be able to run a lot of hand traps. Things like BA, things like Fur Hires, uh, anything where hand traps are becoming super prevalent and you're not able to run things like Called by the Grave. You're not able to run things uh, that prevent your opponent from targeting by themselves like Spell of Traps in that instance. Uh, Cerevis becomes a, a really, really uh, techy card but really effective in stopping your opponents. Um, like I said, if you if it, this sits in the side deck for the cost of like $8 for two, you're looking at something that can stop Widow Anchor, stop the negation of Widow Anchor, stop the negation of, um, stop the negation of a lot of the nightmares that target monsters. I think it's Cerebus that destroys the monsters. Uh, but, but targeting is a huge thing in the game as you know, and it's one of the reasons I think Cosmo is semi-viable, but that's for another video. Uh, but I think Cerevis is, like, a very, very, like, undervalued hand trap right now. And I think that this card could see an uprise in value just because of its uh, versatility in the side deck. You know, people were siding certain cards that, you know, you'll see in deck profiles where people were like, I didn't even side this card in. Especially, like, even in the situation of evenly matched. Uh, a lot of times we see people that don't even side those in. Well, if you're going up against something like Trickstar Sky Striker, which we plan on seeing it through the entire WCQ season, uh, Serevis is a very, very good option to stop things like Widow Anchor when your opponent tries to steal the game or prevent you from winning the game by just taking your monster with Widow Anchor. Just drop that Serevis, say no. Um, and it's just really, really effective. I really like this card, and I think that it may see a lot more play in the future uh, with such a format that's so based on targeting. Um, it's just really, really effective, and your opponent uh, doesn't really play around this. Uh, I've noticed that in playtesting that they will allow most of this to go through. Uh, so he's something that you should all think of picking up uh, just to have. He's he's relatively inexpensive, and you never know when some of these random hand traps go up. I remember originally when Maxi was like a $15 card, and then everybody was like, well, damn, this card's good as shit. Uh, and then everybody started paying 60s on him. So think about... Uh, what you want to do in your side, think about your deck's options, uh, what your deck's initial goal is to win to to like win a game, um, and base your side deck off of these. These are just three options that I'm giving you guys um, that are a little more on the budget side, something that the casual competitive player can put in, or if you're a competitive player and you, you want to throw in something that maybe your opponent isn't going to see coming, um, it's very strong. I think... Uh, Card knowledge and the ability to surprise your opponent is very strong in the game today, and I think that's what all three of these give you as a side deck option, uh, and you know without breaking your but your budget. So, uh, if you guys like this video and want to see more of this stuff, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps us out, especially with YouTube being the way that they are. Uh, we're really trying to get the channel back up, so smash the like button. If you guys have any comments or think I'm completely crazy by suggesting these cards, uh, leave it in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys, and I read every comment that I have. Um, it's just it's just a good way for me to connect with the community and the people that enjoy watching my videos. Um, and if you guys wouldn't mind, subscribe to join the revolution today. This is Slender Revolution Out. I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Don't keep your love, 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 love.